2019 Chinese blockbuster Wandering Earth depicts the Earth travelling through space after the United Earth government, but mostly led by the Chinese, elected to move Earth to another star due to the death of the Sun. This opposes the American values of individualism and adventure, in which humans probably would have flown away and colonised a new planet. But unsurprisingly, it aligns with the Chinese values of homeland, history, community and continuity, as well as the messages pushed by the CCP who partially produced the film, and are pushing it as a form of soft power to tell the world that the Chinese space programme is rising and it's nothing to be concerned about. The father of Chinese rocketry is Chan Shuzhen, who studied in Shanghai before working for the Americans during the Second World War, producing their responses to the V-1 and V-2 rockets, as well as working on the Manhattan Project. After the war, he was considered one of the world's best rocket scientists, but during the early Cold War, he was accused of being a communist sympathiser and prosecuted, returning to China in 1955, where he began laying the foundations for the Chinese space programme. This was because Mao Zedong had insisted on investment in these programmes, even though China was a poor and agricultural country in the late 50s. The chairman of the CCP wanted long-range missiles and space technology for the fledgling states, and Xu Zhen and other scientists trained the next generation, which would develop missiles and nukes with the aid of their allies from the Soviet Union. The Sino-Soviet relations were deteriorating, however, so this cooperation lessened and by 1960 ended, but China would go on to produce its Dongfeng East Wind missiles. Following this, during the Cultural Revolution, lots of scientists were killed and a manned mission to space was cancelled. In 1970, the first Chinese satellite was launched and they developed intercontinental ballistic missile capability and put lots of satellites up during the 80s as the country consolidated its position as an economic and military power. In 2007, China destroyed one of its own satellites, an impressive and bold move which produced a lot of debris and raised questions about a space arms race. And following this in 2011, it was frozen out of the Artemis Accords, sort of rules for internationally acceptable space operations. This was following the Wolf Amendment in the US which banned cooperation with China in space matters due to concerns about too much cooperation with its growing rival, as well as espionage accusations against China. But despite this, during the last 20 years, the PRC has built a cutting edge and constantly expanding space industry, putting a man in space in 2003, and since 2016 it's been the only country to have its own operational space station. As well as a lunar landing in 2019 and even a Mars rover in 2021. There are over 100 space-related companies in China, and the CCP is encouraging private investment into this. As well as a massively increasing the number of engineers graduating, in numbers that the West just can't compete with. In 2021, Russia and China announced joint intentions to build a moon base, and now want a permanent presence there by 2035. They've selected the lunar south pole due to the possibility of getting water from the ice there. And in the future, Beijing is also going to expand its Baidu navigational system, which will be a great asset to the country as a form of GPS, as well as launch an estimated thousand satellites in the next 10 years. Both of these schemes will aid China in its Belt and Road plans offering services through this infrastructure to developing countries and removing them from the American sphere of influence. China's space program is much more militarised than international counterparts, and the leadership understands that dominance of space is important for China's future plans of global dominance. So the landing of the Chang-4 rover in 2019 marks the first US-Chinese collaboration since the 2011 ban and shows that detente is possible in this situation. But with the superpowers unwilling to cooperate and risk their opponents getting a leg up today, which could snowball into dominance of Earth's orbit and beyond in the future, the future of space exploration is likely to be a cause of tension, since what happens in space is merely a reflection of the politics of Earth. Thanks for watching. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is.